Oh, praise the Lord, church. Oh, come on. Can we magnify him for just a moment? Can we thank him for that precious blood this morning? There's power in the blood. What a great reminder to begin this service. If it hadn't been for the shed blood, where would we be this morning? Can we give him a hand clap of praise? I'm excited to be in the house of the Lord today. Uh, this is where we draw our strength. This is where we draw our encouragement and our help in the time of trouble. For God is a present help in time of trouble for us. I'm thankful for him. Thankful for our guests today. Let's give all of our visitors a hand clap. Thank you for coming and worshiping with us on this beautiful morning. Uh, we've got great things in store, and I believe God does as well. I'm thankful for our home folk that are here as well. I don't want to leave you out. I'm thankful for this church. You know, one thing that stands out to me about Gospel Tabernacle is everybody that walks in the doors, they talk about how welcome they feel. You can't find that just anywhere. You can't find the love that God shows here just anywhere, and I'm thankful for that. Uh, we're going to move right along in service this morning. I do have a few prayer requests I'm going to make uh, mention this morning. Uh, let's uplift Helen Sellers. Uh, she is still in the mid uh, but is doing better. Uh, she needs a touch in her body, and God can do so. I'm believing in complete restoration upon her. She is on up in years, but that's okay. God does not limit his power upon age. So I believe God can move in that situation. Let's uplift Ryan Austin, uh, Brother Ricky Butler, Brother Fred Dillman, uh, Jackie Jernigan. Let's keep uh, uplifting Mark Marshall in need of a miracle. Also, we've been requesting prayer for Brother Bishop. This is pastor at Victory in New Albany. Uh, he's going to be going under some treatment uh, the next several weeks. Uh, he needs strength for the days to come uh, for this situation and trial that he is facing. But greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Do you believe that this morning? So let's uplift that family. Also, we made mention several weeks ago, Sean Humbers. Uh, this is a gentleman that works right alongside Brother Aaron Lee. Uh, had found a mass on his brain, a tumor. Uh, he had that mass removed, and he is doing better. Praise God for that. We still serve a way maker. We still serve a God that makes a way where there seemeth to be none. If you have a need today, you're in the right place. If you have a sickness today, the healer's here. If you need a situation to be performed, the way maker is here. You've stepped in these doors with expectations, and God has come to meet those needs this morning. I'm reminded in uh, Philippians 4 and 19, it says, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. If you have a need this morning, go ahead and let it be known by the lifting of your hand. Allow that other hand to go to surrenderance and believing in God's power. Lord, we come before you on this beautiful morning that you have blessed us with. God, with many situations and many trials and sickness seems to flood our minds and our community. But God, I am still serving the same God that was the same God 2,000 years ago. For the power is never changing. Lord, you are still making a way where there seemeth to be none. I proclaim the name of Jesus upon every disease, upon every sickness, upon on every problem in every family this morning. God, you see every heart and mind and soul in this sanctuary. God, we have gathered together under the saving name of Jesus today for one reason, and God, that is to get everything that you have ordained for us. God, we pray in this service that the mighty power and the anointing power of the Holy Ghost would take complete control today. And God, just move the mountains, loosen the church today God we bind against every evil spirit we bind against every device that the enemy's trying to come against this church but upon this rock this church is going to stand and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it in all these things we proclaim your precious name Jesus can we give him a hand clap this morning I don't know about you all, but I feel a stirring in the spirit today. 
The same God that I serve on the mountaintop is the same God that I serve in the valley low. And I'm so thankful that he's never changing just based on our situation or where we're at in life. My, 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 I feel a great moving in the spirit this morning. Let's give him one hand clap of praise one more time. We're going to go ahead in our tithes and our offerings at this time if our ushers would be making their way. Uh, as they are coming to give you a few extra moments, we're going to go through a couple of announcements. Uh, let's not forget Camp One Youth Camp is less than two months away. Uh, if you want to go as a camper or staff member, please, please, please get signed up. Uh, the deadline for uh, the camp shirts are June the 14th. If you need info, say me or Brother Jason. Also, everybody say Father's Day. It's coming up June the 19th. Please make plans to be in service. We have a great day planned for Father's Day. Uh, also, if you would like to give or to pledge an amount for our Ukraine mission offering, please see Pastor to do so. We have set a goal of $10,000. That's not much with the God that we serve. So if you want to give to that cause, please see Pastor. Also, we'll have a table set up next Sunday. Uh, this will be a baby shower for Kayla and Aaron's baby that is uh, quickly approaching. Uh, so let's please shower them with love and gifts for that baby that's on its way. And at this time, if the men of music will, let's give back to the Lord this morning. Praise the Lord. Thank you to all for giving this morning. I know God will give it uh, back to you. He'll bless you abundantly. Uh, at this time, our worship team is getting ready to lead us in worship this morning. Uh, but real quick, I do want to read in Psalms 23. We all know this very well, so just bear with me just a moment. It says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, thou comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Here's where I want to get to this morning. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever who needs some goodness and some mercy this morning I want to encourage you as long as you will abide in the house of the Lord surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all of your days let's worship with the worship team
and we magnify the Lord this morning. Let's lift up a hand clap of praise to Him. You know, folks, there's just some sicknesses we can't heal. There's just some problems we can't fix. There's just some chains we can't break. But when we call on the name of Jesus, the Bible says all power in heaven and earth is given unto him. Why don't somebody call on his name right now? Can we lift our hands across this house? Why don't somebody just speak his name? Maybe you hadn't spoken in a long time. Why don't somebody just say the name of Jesus? Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. What a hope we have in Jesus. He taketh all of our sins away. I'm thankful for the name of Jesus. He's a strong tower. The righteous runneth into him and they are safe. So good today to see Sister Charlotte Smith and Brother Sherman Smith back in service with us today. We love them. So thankful for them. But although they may not have been here in body, they were here in spirit. They were here faithful. Uh, these are some faithful folks. And I, I'm thankful for them. And uh, if you're a guest with us today, God bless you. We're glad that you're here today. My grandmother is here somewhere. She was. Where is she? She may have, There she is back there. This is my grandma Winders, everybody. We're thankful to have her, are we not? She, uh, she used to live uh, uh, in Missouri. You can be seated. Uh, she used to live in Missouri, and now she lives here in Corinth with us, and uh, so thankful for that. We'll get to spend uh, more time with her probably than we ever have before, and so we're thankful that she's in church uh, with us here today. Are you thankful to be in church today? Well, I want to tell you, I've got some exciting news to share with the church this morning, and... Uh, I think that you'll like to hear this, and if you don't like to hear it, I sure like to hear it, so you don't really matter. I, I, I'm, I, I'll, I'll praise for you, and I'll be thankful for you. Uh, but uh, earlier this week, I got a call uh, from a lady, um, and I didn't recognize the number, but I picked it up anyway. You know, there's sometimes numbers ring my phone, and I'm just like, I'm not answering. I don't know who that is. If they want something, they can leave me a voicemail. But something just told me, hey, just pick up the phone. And so I did, and the lady on the other end of the line just began to talk to me, and uh, she said, we've got that land right beside the church she had talked to me about quite a while back, and uh, Sister Nell had talked to them quite a while back as well, and she says, uh, we want to sell it to you. It's 30 acres. And I said, well, we want it. Uh, we've been praying about some land, and if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, if you go right outside this door here and look to your right, all of this land that runs right along the highway. She said, I want to sell you 30 acres. Well, we had planned a board meeting and planned to meet, and we'd started looking at the land a little bit more, and we found that it wasn't 30, it was 45 acres. And so I called her back, and I said, look, I, I, you know, we, we're seeing this land's 45 instead of 30. I said, but if you want to sell us 15 more acres, we'll be glad to take that as well. She said, that's not a problem. I'll sell you the total 45. So we have uh, reached an agreement uh, financially as far as the church. We met as a board on Thursday night. So I am proud to announce to you that as of Monday, we should be under an official contract for a brand new 45 acres that runs right along this highway behind the church. I want to give God praise for that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if you'll hang with us long enough, we plan on that being the very spot that we're going to build our brand new facility uh, one day. And I am thankful for that. God is good to us. Whether he gave us the land or not, he's still good to us. He's still good to us, and I'm thankful for that today. Uh, we're going to uh, uh, carry on with our family series that we've been talking about, Family Matters. Uh, I'm going to read out of the book of James, if you will, today, starting with chapter 3. I want to read a couple verses, um, and just in your reading this morning, James chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. 
Didn't we have an awesome Sunday last Sunday? We had a great time in the Lord. We had two baptized in Jesus' name. And uh, we're, we're so thankful for that. I'm, I'm thankful for what God is doing. James chapter 3 verse 1 says, My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. But listen to what it says. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. And so this morning in our, as our series continues, I want to talk about why words matter. Why words matter. Will you grab your hand of the person next to you or just lift your hands up in heaven and ask God to speak with us this morning. Father, we lift up your name. We're here to glorify you in your sanctuary today. We're here to make known your deeds among the congregation. And God, we want to thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. But God, we're not here by happenstance. I believe we're here to receive a word from you. And I pray you'd speak to every heart and mind in this building today. That you would use me for the glory of God as I point these people to you, God. And as we look at your word, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You can be seated in Jesus' name. Words to the majority of us are our communication. Whether they be written or spoken, they are used to communicate statements, questions, exclamations, ideas, wants, needs, etc., and etc. It's just like when my little girl wakes up in the morning, she looks at me and says, Ba, 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 ba. I understand she's trying to communicate something to me. Or she walks to the pantry and points and something that says, Bite, 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 bite. I understand that she is wanting something and thus that's her communication to me to get what she needs. This was God's choosing for mankind. He wanted us to be able to communicate with one another and also he wanted us to communicate with him. Can I get a witness somebody? We need to communicate with him. And if you truly want to understand how powerful unified and healthy communication is Let us look to the book of Genesis chapter 11 beginning with verse 1 and the Bible says and the whole earth was of one language and of one speech and it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar and they dwelt there and they said one to another go to let us make brick and burn them thoroughly and they had brick for stone and slime had they for mortar. And they said, go to, let us build a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. But verse 5 says, and the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, behold... Somebody needs to hear this. Behold, the people is one. Can I just insert something here? It is not God's will for his church to be divided. He's meant for us to be one. Behold, the people is one and they have all one language. And this they begin to do. And listen to what he says. And now nothing... Nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down and there confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. Let me tell you today that unified speech and communication gave men and women the power and the possibility to build a city and a tower that gained attention from heaven. So much that God had to confound their language to discontinue the project. I want to let somebody know today that your words, if used in the correct manner, have the potential to elevate, have the potential to construct, 
and have the potential, if I can talk right, to support. But in the same way that they built this tower, all of a sudden it had to stop. Why? Because they lost communication with one another. They stopped because they had a lack to effectively communicate with one another. So he couldn't look at his brother and say, hey, bring me a brick and put it right here. So he was talking a different language. So everything had to stop. Can I just tell you today, you know when this church will start growing? It'll stop growing when the people get divided. The church will stop its progress when we can't communicate effectively with one another again. Can I tell you, it's important the things that we say to one another. It's important how we uh, effectively communicate ourselves. But just as well as our words, if they're used in the correct manner, have the potential to make us uh, uh, grow and to make us effective, uh, if our words are used in the incorrect manner, they have the potential to hurt. They have the potential to halt. They have the potential to hinder and even open the door for hate. Our words are important and the words that we use matter. In the book of James chapter 3, the Bible tells us, Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth that they may obey us. Anybody may, may know any time you, you get on a horse, if you rode any at all, you put that bit in your mouth and you can pull him to this side because of that bit and it puts that pressure and he knows which way he needs to go. And if you move him this side, it puts that bit in and James said, just as we put it in the horse's mouth and we turn about their whole body that's able to do that. And he said, behold also ships. Let me summarize a little bit which they be so great and are driven with the wind, yet a little steering wheel is able to turn that whole ship. Even so the tongue is a little member, but it boasteth great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. Verse 6 says, And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity, so is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body. But my hands are pure. But my mind is pure. But my feet are pure. But if your tongue is not pure, it defileth the whole body. Can I tell somebody today, you can work on your hands all you want to. You can work on your feet all you want to. But if you'll learn to start working on your tongue, you can make sure your body is moving and working in the direction that God has for you. And it says, it sets on fire the course of nature. And it is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beast and birds and serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and hath been tamed of mankind. But somebody needs to hear this. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Hey, we thought the venomous steak was dangerous. Turns out we have one constantly living inside of our mouths full of deadly poison. We have no need to go get gasoline and a lighter to start a fire. You have the potential to have a fire burning from your tongue here this morning. We humans can say some of the most hurtful, evil, and condescending things. And can I put something in here? We who are supposed to be Holy Ghost filled apostolic and changed can say some of the most hurtful, evil, and condescending things. But that not it's not supposed to be like that, folks. Sure, you might can bridle your closet, but can you bridle your tongue? You might can bridle your haircut, but can you bridle your tongue? That tongue, if it's not able, if it's not under control, it'll, it'll defile the whole body. There is a rather famous expression 
That was first attested in folk phrases of four counties by G.F. Northall. And it was published in 1894 for the English Dialect Society. And it's a rather famous statement and it says this. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never harm me. With all due respect, G.F. Northall, you are terribly, terribly, terribly mistaken. More than likely everyone in this room has been hurt in some form or another by the words of others. You may still hear them ringing in your ears this morning. Or maybe you are the one who have spoke words to someone that you can never take back. And you know that even today when you look at that person, you know that you've left a scar in them that you cannot take back. Away. Solomon must have knew a little bit about this as he said in the book of Proverbs chapter 15 that a soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. Can I tell somebody today that it's not only the words you say, but it's the manner in which you say them? Look. I can jokingly come up to Brother Tanner and uh, just say, shut up, man, you know, and smile at him. Or I could look at him and say, shut up. Now, that's going to take, that's two totally different things. It's the same word, but how I delivered that word made the difference. And so Solomon said, when there is wrath present, When somebody's upset with you, when somebody wants to quarrel with you, if you'll give them a soft answer, it says it turns away wrath. Some of you may be wondering, how can I get out of conflict? Lower your tone. I learned a long time ago sometimes when after I got married to just say, okay, baby. Sure, we can come up to somebody and hit the same tone back at them and say, hey, I ain't losing this one. Yeah, you are. There's not going to be a winner in it. You can be the bigger person and say, hey, I'm going to use a soft answer. It's going to turn away wrath. And grievous words Stir up anger. The words that you pinpoint to somebody can stir up anger in them. If you don't want folks angry at you, learn to shut your mouth. If you don't want people upset with you, take hurtful things off of your tongue. I know that's blunt and direct this morning, but we are pursuing peace. I want to remind us that how we respond makes all the difference in the world. How we respond in a disagreement with our spouse matters. How we speak to our children matters. How we speak to our siblings and our parents. Some of these young people need to hear me. How we speak to them matters. How we talk among our coworkers matter. How we talk to ourselves when we're looking in the mirror, matters. Hey, let me tell some young people this. When you look in that mirror, don't look in that mirror and say, I'm ugly, I'm never going to be anything, I'm not talented, I don't look at everybody else, but you need to look in that mirror and say, hey, I'm a child of God. I'm beautiful in his eyes. I was made in his image. I do have a purpose. I do have an anointing. Wonder why you're having bad days at school. Wonder why you're struggling so bad to fit in. It's because you have not accepted that you are beautiful just the way you are. That you are talented just the way you are. We have become a society who likes to look at social media and look at certain women and men and think if we don't look this way, if we don't dress this way, if we don't act this way, we're not really in the in crowd. Let me tell you, you don't need to be in the in crowd. You need to be in a crowded place called heaven. And that's what you need to make up your mind today to be. Thankful I got one back here who's going to shout for me. Can I tell you, 
When you say, I'm sorry, I was angry after some hurtful words, it will not take back the poison. I'm sorry I was not in a good state of mind will not automatically extinguish the fire. The damage has already been done. You can't put the toothpaste back in the tube after you squeezed it all out. After you've opened your mouth and shut all those words out at one time at the person you're talking to, you can't get them all back at one time and put them back in there. You know what the Bible says? It says what goes into the body does not defile the body, but what comes out of the body is that which defileth the body. You want to know what kind of person you're dealing with? Wait till they open their mouth. You want to know what kind of person somebody is? Wait till you hear the words coming out of their mouth. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. That ain't popular. Hey, I'm talking to somebody here. We must think before we speak. If you're consumed with anger, I'm preaching to Levi 101 right now. Over my whole life, especially before I got in church, I dealt with horrible anger. And I would get so angry and I would say some of the most hurtful things to my family, some of the most hurtful things to my friend. And I learned that if I was consumed with anger, it was best just to keep my mouth shut. You're not thinking clearly when you're angry. You've got mo emotions and things running through your mind. You're not thinking clearly. And if you are emotionally destroyed, you're not thinking clearly. Can I tell somebody, if you're depressed, don't make a life-changing decision. If you're going through a midlife crisis, don't go out and buy a $200,000 house. Wait till the crisis is over and then look back and say, can I afford it or can I not afford it? Why? We're not thinking clearly. We're not thinking clearly. I hope I'm helping somebody today. James chapter 1 verse 19 through 20 says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to speak. To wrath. So we should run to hear, be slow to speak, and then be slow to anger. You know what verse 20 says? For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Just because it can be justified when you're angry does not mean that you're working the righteousness of God. People who live right know when to speak and know when not to speak. We're all guilty of messing up, but over time we'll learn. Proverbs 16 and 32 says, He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. Hey, we could say, look, I may not be the strongest weightlifter in the room, but I'm working on controlling my anger. And God, when he looks at you, he says, He's stronger than the mighty because he can tame his own anger. And he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh a city. I am convinced today that if we can allow God to control our anger, our frustrations, and our emotions, we can limit the damaging words that we have the power and potential to speak. Let us choose to speak words that are pleasing and acceptable in the sight of God. You may be sitting there today and say, well, everybody messes up, says things that they shouldn't. I'm going to tell you that does have some truth to it. But God talks about that again in the writing of James, and I want to bring our attention to that here this morning. That way you can't use that as an excuse to cuss somebody out at work. That way you can't use that as an excuse to... Get angry and go off on somebody and say, well, sometimes we mess up. He says, therefore, bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. I'm sorry, I forgot to send you all my verses up there. Just thought of that, brethren. 
My apologies to you. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Let me break 9 and 10 down. We come in, we lift our hands, we thank God, we bless God. We walk out the door, we talk about people behind their back. We gossip, we're double-tongued, we, we think we can speak whatever we want to. God said these things ought not so to be. And can I clarify something here today? It said we curse men. It didn't say whether they were good men or whether they were evil men. He said they're all made in the similitude of God. Will we choose to be blessers or will we choose to be double-tongued? Can I tell somebody today, and I heard this not too long ago, God forbid that when I'm pastor here, we'll be called gossip tabernacle instead of gospel tabernacle. Hey, got, got quiet in here real quick, didn't it? We can't bridle our tongues. We're no good to God. Bridle your tongues. You don't talk about your brother. Doth a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? No, you can't get both of them at the fountain. It's either going to be bitter or it's going to be sweet. Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries? Or a vine, can it bear figs? So can no fountain yield salt water and fresh water. You're not going to go to the gulf and go right here and say, okay, I'm going to get in the salt water this time I step in. And then you walk a little few feet down the beach and say, I'm going to get in some fresh water right here. It's salt water, folks. When there's salt in the, in the mix of it, there's no separation there. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. You want me to tell you what will make some of us the wisest men and the knowledgeable men and women in the world? The Bible says we will show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. Wisdom is not what we know. That not, that's not what just makes us wise. And I'm going to get into that here in a minute. It says, if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above. If you are bitter, that's not wise. If you have envying and strife in your heart, it's not wise. It says it's not from above. It's earthly. It's sensual. Then look what it says. It's devilish. But I have a reason to be upset with them. I have a reason to go right now and knock on their door and as soon as they answer, just hit them right in the nose. That's devilish. That's sensual. Didn't say if you had a cause, you can be like that. For where envying, where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. If you're operating in anger and malice, you are not in the will of God. Somebody needs to hear me. But listen what verse 17 says. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Can we ask ourselves today, are we using words of wisdom in our lives? Not as the world gives, but that comes from above. Here's how we're going to find out. First question is, are the words you using pure? Can I clarify, curse words are not pure. Well, I slip up from time to time. Get repentance, ask for forgiveness, but those things are not pure. I'm going to tell you, I know I'm a little bit, got a little bit of time here, but we need to hear this. 
I remember shortly after I got into church, I was working along one of my coworkers, and you know, I was praying, I was reading, and maybe I was having a bad week that week. Brother Taylor, he just kept on me at work, brother. Kept on, kept on, just aggravating the fire out of me. And for long, I just looked at him and I just cussed him. Just straight as anybody else, I just cussed him and I walked away. Can I tell you, when that word left my mouth, it was like a knife just got stabbed inside of me. Why? Because it wasn't pure. I let him get under my skin instead of keeping my mouth shut. And so thus, he calls me to break. But even in the breaking, I remember asking God, please forgive me. Please forgive me. And I remember even going to ask him out there. And it was hard. It was so hard to ask him, brother, will you please forgive me for saying that word? Now, to some people, that might sound foolish. But foolish people don't understand pure things. And so it's hard to comprehend. So when we speak, is it pure? Next thing, when we speak, is it peaceable? Are we trying to conduct peace? Or do we know what we're about to say is about to hurt and it's about to hurt bad? What we're about to say is about to stab somebody in the heart and make them angry. Is it peaceable? Next thing, is it gentle? I think a lot of us can work on this, me included. Are the words we're saying, are they gentle? Are they kind? Are they loving? Then is it easy to be entreated? And is it full of mercy and good fruits? Then is it without partiality or hypocrisy? I want to ask this congregation today, will we from this point forward allow God to tame our tongues? No man can do it. I can't do it. You can't do it. If we're going to do it, it's going to take God. We cannot take back what we have spoken in the past. The past is the past. But we can decide to choose what we speak in the future. I want us to choose encouragement over discouragement. I want us to choose peace over strife. I want to choose healing over hurt. I want to choose goodness over evil. I want to build up instead of working on tearing somebody down. I want to put somebody back together instead of tearing them apart. You and I have the power today to choose to change our future. But we got to tame our tongues. Some of us may have gave God our hands, our feet, our minds, and maybe even our lives. But I have one last question today. Have you given him your tongue? Have you given him your tongue? Can we stand today? I know this ain't been a shout down here this morning. But we need to hear what God wants to tell us today. We need to hear what the Spirit is wanting to say unto the church. Sure. Will we say some things sometimes that maybe be a little bit out of order? I'm sure we will. But are we man and woman enough to admit when we've hurt with our mouths and to say, I'm sorry, forgive me, I'm working. God is doing a work in me. Even today, I'm reminded of words I said when I was in high school. Can I tell somebody this today? Now listen, I grew up in church. This might sound crazy to you. But I remember when I said my very first by word. Not a cuss word. I'm talking about a by word. Second, third grade. Going out on the playground kid just said something foolish and I just repeated him 
Can I tell you, just because somebody else says it does not mean you have to say it. Then I remember when I started saying my first curse words. Those things still, and that's crazy to some folks maybe. But those things still hit me. Because those were milestones that hurt me. I'm talking to somebody here today that's been hurt by words. Maybe you got scars all over you, in you. Maybe somebody in this very church has hurt you. And if I've said any evil thing to anybody in this entire church, I'll be the first one to say, I repent. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I hurt you. Didn't mean to. Can we choose today? Can somebody make up their mind today that God... I don't want you to just have one part of me. I want you to have all of me. Can I just insert this real quick? Do you know why God fills with the Holy Ghost and people speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance? You know how He's able to do that? Remember what I said that no man can tame the tongue. But when we humble ourselves before God, and he fills us with the Holy Ghost. You know how he confirms that? He says, I'm taming that very last member. And I'm going to use it to speak glory and blessing unto me. I'm going to tame it. Will somebody allow God to tame your tongue today? Maybe you've hurt somebody in your birds. Maybe you've talked about me. Maybe you've gossiped behind my back. You hadn't hurt me. But maybe today you need to ask for forgiveness. Maybe today you need to repent. As they sing this song today, why don't we come as a church and say, God, we want to be pleasing to you. Our words matter.